Okay, happy day. You're listening to Breath Play Happy Hour. Our intention is for you to learn and practice how the breath can guide you to wake up, let go, and shift your success in life, love, business, sports, and beyond. I'm your host, Roberto Suarez, better known as the Happy Coach. So let's take a couple of deep breaths to relax and transform today. So we're going to inhale, inhale, exhale through the mouth, and let go a couple more times to inhale, exhale, and one more time, inhale, and exhale. So that was great. With me today, I have Dan Brule. Dan is uh, a modern day teacher, healer, world renowned pioneer, uh, field of breath work. He's one of the creators of breath therapy, and it's one of the original group of international certified rebirthers. Plus, he's a master in the prana yoga, which is uh, Hindu science of breath and qigong, Chinese medical breathing exercises. And he leads the worldwide spiritual uh, breathing movement. And there's more and more and more. It's, you know, trained more than 150,000 people over 60 countries, including me. And uh, I appreciate Dan for coming to Cuba and starting the breathwork movement there with me. And uh, so we, here we are. Welcome to uh, Breath Play Happy Hour, Dan. Oh, and, great uh, to be here. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations on uh, on launching this. It's gonna make a difference in the world, brother. Yeah, it's you know it took me a while. I had to do a lot of breathing to get rid of all that, uh, uh, I guess, <laughs> resistance to starting. <laughs> and uh, it's all good. So why don't we get started by you know I call it breath play, but how how, how do you you know? And I got uh, that idea from you when when you were defining what breath work is, you know? So can you tell me more about how you define breath work and how you brought in play into it? Yeah, well, you know, a play is nature's way of learning, right? Animals play fighting to learn how to fight. They play hunting to learn how to hunt, you know, and that, that's nature's way. So as we play with our breath, we develop certain skills that help us to work through emotional issues, psychological issues, physical issues, behavioral issues. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think you get the right idea, you know, I mean, and also thinking in terms of playing with the breath keeps us on a lighter footing. You know, I believe seriousness is a disease. And, um, and uh, so, you know, bringing in this idea of, you know, playing with the breath dancing with the breath, taking things lightly, being curious, being creative, you know, rather than serious and trying to solve problems and fix things. Uh, you know, all the problems get solved and things get fixed when we follow our heart, when we do things we love, when we, you know, we expand our consciousness, when we, uh, when we tap into creative energy. And that's what breath work does. Absolutely. And, and, and I really got it, I, I don't know, it was in one breath or something where I really got that distinction, you know? And, you know, I, I've been a, also a business coach and we always call it, I always call the, the, the business plans, you know, like, a, like the games, you know, how, how are we gonna play this game? Instead of like, okay, how are we gonna make this business go? You know, because when you play, you can create a game and it has certain rules and you can change the rules and, right? It, and what I love about you is that you, you bring that in with the, with the breath that there's no, really, there's no rules. And, uh, and, and, and we, we get it going. So, so t t tell me a little more about your breath story. You know, not like the whole story, but how you got into it. And, and, uh, and you know, and, and when did you really thought, you thought that you were making a difference in the world? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I was turned on to the miraculous nature or the, the divine potential of breath work as a small child in, in kindergarten, you know, five years old and listening to the priest tell us about how, you know, God took dust of the earth and formed the body of man and breathed into the nostrils of man. As a small child, that was just the most amazing thing I had heard that like, God, I'm, 
I'm breathing in God right now. I, holy cow. So, you know, it was like something sparked as a young child got me interested and curious and in awe a bit about the breath. And then I just had a series of, you know, getting the wind knocked out of me, nearly drowning, uh, you know, somebody trying to suffocate me, you know, being on the bottom of a pig pile, which, you know, is fun when your kids in the schoolyard, you know, they all pile on top, you know, it's loving fun. But when you're on the bottom and there's, you know, a ton of other people on you and you can't breathe. So, you know, I had those experiences. It was like life kept turning me back to the breath, forcing me to pay attention to my breathing. And then, uh, you know, as an x-ray technician, I began to do chest x-rays. So I was actually looking into the lungs of a person when they, uh, and telling them to take in a deep breath and hold it. So I was already beginning to coach and guide people in their breathing, just for the sake of having a clear picture and x-ray. Um, I learned CPR and I began to resuscitate people, to reanimate people. What a miracle when somebody is clinically dead, they're not breathing, their heart is not beating, their pupils are fixed and dilated. <laughs> and you blow into them and they wake up. I mean, what a miracle. Absolutely. And then in, in the military, I was in deep sea diving. I was underwater rescue. So I, again, I was forced to get comfortable with not breathing, holding your breath for long periods of time, mixing gases for deep sea diving, uh, working in a recompression chamber, uh, practicing breath holding. So uh, the military just, you know, had me double down also on, on, the, on the idea of controlling your breath to control your arousal, controlling your breath to control your mental state and your emotional state, uh, to get a handle on your physiology, to, to focus your mind, to be able to concentrate. So I was also developing practical ways of using my breath to stay in the zone, to get into the zone, to manage life and death, high stress, uh, you know, situations. So all of that coming out of the military, I just felt like I had an advantage and I had had experiences that I wish everyone could have and began to explore how can I introduce people to breathing? How can I, how can we play with our breath to unlock our potential? And uh, so it's been, it's, it's something I never really consciously chose to do. It was just my mission in life. It was my purpose. And I tried to escape it. I tried doing other things, but nothing else ever worked out. So finally, you know, the universe makes it really clear. Okay, Dan, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Never mind all the other stuff. Just <laughs> this is your work. This is your life. So, um, you know, I'm a missionary for the breath. And, um, and I'm glad I'm not the only one anymore. Yahoo. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. You know, and, and I, I didn't have all that military experience and everything like that, like you, but I, I can remember now that I know more about the breath when I did sports, like in high school or mm -hmm. in college, where I would, they say I, I return a kickoff. I, I was breathing through the mouth all the time. <laughs> you know, because I was 11 big black guys chasing me, right? <laughs> Scared. <Yeah. laughs> and I, I was running, right? But when I finished, I was out of air. And I would have to go and take oxygen, you know, because I didn't know really how to breathe. I, you know, I didn't know that. I, I, and I go, wow, I wish I would have known that when I was younger. And, uh, you know, part of this conversation, part of my clients are athletes and entrepreneurs, you know, that they, a lot of them think that they already know about the breath, right? But, uh, yeah. you know, and I'll take an example of a, you know, a, a professional basketball player. Like I asked him, what happens when you miss a three pointer two times in a row? You know, he goes, well, I try to breathe. And how do, how do you breathe? Well, I just go, <laughs> you follow me? And <laughs> so wh what can you say to like athletes or entrepreneurs that really haven't really got into breath work, right? Why and how can the I, breath help them? You know? Yeah. Um, I read a really interesting thing that, you know, fear of snakes. That's like a universal fear, right? <laughs> but some, 
some people, the fear is so deep that like, I heard this example, if you put a hundred people in a room and you dump a box of snakes in the middle of the room, 80 of those people are gonna run for the door in a pure panic they're gonna step on children. They're gonna knock old ladies over. They're gonna kick you out of the way to get to the door. It's a primal fear. And it's an uncontrollable reaction in our body. So that to me is a very good analogy of what happens to breathing uh, in sports. If you're passionate, if you're enthusiastic, if you really wanna win and you pour everything into it, it's kind of like your breath is just released into a panic mode. And it's just, um, you know, the breath just gets active. <laughs> and it's chaotic and it's uncontrolled because it's kind of a primal fear reaction to just give us all the energy we need. But better to train yourself to breathe, to pace your breathing, regulate your breathing, make your breathing functional, economical, efficient, don't just leave it up to your survival pattern, to your fight or flight mechanism to take control of your breathing. We have to step in with higher order brain function and regulate our breathing. Otherwise our breathing is gonna be a victim of our survival programming. Our, you know, freeze, you're gonna hold your breath or you're gonna run around with a, like a chicken with their head cut off, just wasting a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. And this is just a human thing. And it happens to everybody. And the only people it doesn't happen to are people who have been trained, who have been in the fire, who have been in stressful situations, who learned how to regulate their breathing. And then when they're in a stressful situation, they click into resourceful breathing that supports them rather than just automatic, unconscious panic breathing. And um, so it's, it's vital. Uh, and we misread the symptoms of air hunger so for example, if you hyperventilate, you blow off too much carbon dioxide and your system is trying to compensate by getting you to breathe less. So it puts resistance against you trying to breathe more. And when you feel that resistance, you try even harder to overcome the resistance and you're in a vicious circle where you're actually fighting with yourself rather than flowing into the zone. And so the only way to get a handle on our energy, to get a handle on our mind, on our focus, is to get a handle on our breath. And people in sports and in business need to do that to be able to show up at their best. And breathing is that missing key for a lot of people. Mindset is important. Physical training is important. Nutrition is important. And breath control may be the most important thing especially in a crunch. Absolutely. You don't want to be trying to, you don't want to be trying to catch up. You want to be staying ahead. And, <laughs> and so my friend, Mark Devine, who's as a high performer as you can get, former Navy SEAL commander, you know, he says it's a lot harder. Uh, it's a lot easier to keep up than it is to catch up. Mm. And it's even harder to stay ahead but that's what we need to focus on. If we focus on staying ahead of our energy demand, then, then we can perform at peak rather than trying to catch up and keep up. And we're distracted by our own fatigue, by our own dysfunctional breathing. And so people in business, people in sports, if they've achieved any level of success and they have not practiced breath control, then wow, they're going to take they're in for an amazing boost, a turbo charge to what they're doing. And for those people who have practiced, I mean, everybody's had a gym coach in high school who yeah. reminded us to breathe, but that's about it. And, um, and so uh, there, are, there are strategies, there are protocols, there are specific techniques and exercises that are proven now, science-based, evidence-based techniques. We don't have to guess anymore. We know that getting ourselves into a certain breathing pattern triggers things in the nervous system and uh, in, in the immune system and so on. So uh, science is catching up and, yeah, um, and people absolutely. in sports and business need to stay on the cutting edge if they wanna remain in the elite category. Yeah, and, and I, 
and I see you know, showing up. Um, uh, I have a good friend here in Mandora that's in the golf business, and and all the golf the, the winners that are winning now, they ask him what what made the difference, and he said I've hired a breath coach. And yeah. and and then another one had like anxiety, like he wanted to kill himself, and he's, you know, he's a guy that's won the master and everything, and you know he hired a breath coach to get rid of anxiety. Yeah. So it's out there. And uh, it's awesome. What well, you know, if you think, you know, a breath work brings us in touch face to face with whatever emotional issues mm -hmm. are limiting us, whatever psychological issues are blocking us, whatever physiological, mechanical, structural tension issues that are getting in our way. So it's no wonder. I mean, if you hire a breath coach, you're hiring a mindset coach, you're hiring an emotional management coach, you're hiring, you know, you're getting a, a lot of bang for your buck because Absolutely. breath work affects us on all those levels. It's a shortcut to getting a handle on the most vital elements of our performance, our focus, our energy, our consciousness, mm -hmm. our, our, you know, our ability to be resilient, our ability to raise our energy to meet sudden challenges and that's breath work <laughs> and, and be able to be relaxed in those last 10 seconds of, ah. minute of the game right ah, so you can important. tell the difference between who's going to win and lose by the relaxation <laughs> yeah yeah you know so so important that relaxation part you know um it's not just about forcing and powering. It's about releasing and relaxing in some way. That combination of relaxation and power, of peace and energy. It's that combination that puts us into the zone. And you look at a good golfer and their swing is so graceful, mm -hmm. so elegant, so smooth. It looks so effortless. You know, they're not like <laughs> muscling it. It's, it's elegant, it's graceful. And then, and the ball flies a mile, you know? <laughs> so breathing is a skill. We can develop that kind of elegance and smoothness, and it takes our game to another level. Absolutely, and, and also we can use it to let go, to let go of that bad shot, or that you missed three shots in a row, or you did something wrong, you can get rid of it like quickly. So you can be in the yeah, moment. Yeah, because breath, Breathwork turns us into Zen masters, right? Breathwork gives us this ability to shake off the past so it doesn't affect the present or the future. And so breathwork allows us to just release everything that just happened, come back into a pure present moment state, no residue from the past, ready for the next moment. So breathing develops in us these Zen-like abilities to not be disturbed, not, not be projecting and fantasizing future emergencies or having fears from the past affect our performance. Breathwork just cleans that all up so you're able to really perform in the zone. That, that's masterful, Dan. And also, and that translates also into business, especially high power competitive businesses, especially now. You know, like what, what would you recommend to all these people that are trying to pivot their businesses because of this pandemic, yeah. right? You know, we tell, yeah, we tell them that, look, what works on the battlefield works in the boardroom and mm -hmm. it works in the classroom and it works on the playing field and it works in the laboratory and it works in the studio. You know, these are general principles that all humans need to deal with and, um, but and so if these techniques have been tested and tried in the fire in those battlefield kind of situations then we know that for everyday stresses they're really going to work well and so yeah the the we're dealing with the same issues i mean you know for some people a conversation with their teenager about drugs is a life and death situation and mm -hmm. and you want to be in a good state when you're communicating about it and, um, and in business, you know, you have a very important presentation. It could mean the difference between, you know, staying in business or not. Um, and so you need to show up in a resourceful way, centered, energized, calm, focused, 
creative, in touch with your passion, so you can you can you know you can do that presentation and blow people away. Absolutely, that, that's unbelievable. So uh, there's there's so much to cover, but I, I want to ask you if you step out thirty years from now, right? Or no, not thirty years, ten years to twenty thirty, right? And you look back to today. What, 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 what did the, how does the breath world it's going to look like? You know, like what, what have we accomplished? I'll, we'll be celebrating. We'll be celebrating the fact that kids are introduced to self-regulation, emotional management, uh, resilience abilities, starting in the first grade and in kindergarten. It's going to be part of, you know, it's going to be part of the curriculum, giving kids the skills to regulate themselves up and down, regulate themselves, manage their emotions, focus their attention. And so we're going to be celebrating the fact that, that uh, you know, in 2030, that this will be normal in schools around the world. And I'll also be celebrating the fact that with so many people breathing together, that hearts will be much more open, that people will be connecting so much more deeply in so many more beautiful ways. We'll see, we'll be seeing much less violence, much fewer wars, um, a lot more cooperation um, uh, and conspiracies, people breathing together. I think we're going to be looking at the benefit and the value and the results of groups breathing together. And by this, I mean, you know, accessing the flow state in groups, group flow, because individual flow, we got that nailed, you know, individual flow, the athlete, we got that. But the next generation, the next level is group flow. And that means taking all the benefits of people who pray together and chant together um, because when people pray together and they chant together they're actually synchronizing their breathing without realizing it if we're all repeating the same mantra or repeating the same phrase or affirmations we are synchronizing our breathing and that synchronization of breathing the research isn't all there yet but it's going to be coming soon that that this affects the performance of teams. When we breathe together as a team, as a group, we connect in a way that you can't connect any other way. Heart connection, intuitive connection, energetic connection, a felt sense of shared reality. You see something and I have an, a weird urge to look in that direction. You know, that's this intuitive, energetic connection that we develop. And, I'm, and we're gonna be celebrating the fact that breathing will be showing just how much that's working. In 10 years from now, you know, um, first we'll, we're gonna be on to many things that we can't even imagine yet. Mm -hmm. And the world will be catching up to where where we are now. <laughs> so <laughs> the cutting edge right now will be mainstream in 10 years. And Absolutely. so I'm excited about what's going to be current cutting edge in 10 years. That's going to take a few more years after that before it gets absorbed into the mass consciousness. So yeah. uh, exciting things, exciting, you know, the average person will be exhibiting abilities and traits and qualities that we used to think only the great saints and the great masters and the great yogis, you know, those states and abilities were reserved only for those special people. I think 10 years from now, we're gonna be seeing average people exhibiting what now we would call extraordinary abilities. And it's gonna be normal 10 years from now. Oh man, that, that's so, Awesome. All that stuff that you just said, it's like unbelievable. I just came from a presentation of what the business world is going to look like in just in five years, you know, where the internet is all changing. It's all going to be 3D and 
and the people I can't stay with within those systems. There's going to be cities in the sea, and all, but this breath thing is like unbelievable, you know, because you know I I can see that I call it that re-evolution of total consciousness. Yeah, yeah, and that's important because one of the big uh, negative aspects of technology is that our technological abilities have been growing faster than our own human abilities yeah. to mature emotionally and to mature psychologically. And we're at a point where the technology is so advanced, it's like putting a gun in a child's hand. You gotta wait till the kid grows up mm -hmm. before you can trust them with the gun. But technology isn't giving us that ability. It's growing exponentially. And, and as humans, we need to accelerate our own human transformation. Mm -hmm. We need to accelerate, you know, spiritual technologies that, that help us to grow and develop as humans to evolve our awareness and our consciousness so that the technologies that we're creating don't do us in. <laughs> you know, we have, to, we have to grow at the same speed as our technology is growing. Otherwise, we're going to be controlled by the things that we're inventing. Instead of being masters of them, we're going to be victims of them. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Breathwork is about accelerating human evolution, human development. And that's needed now because of the speed at which technology is growing. Yeah, there, there are some people that believe that the uh, computer is overtaking man. You know, like it's going to be yeah. smarter than we are. And, uh, In many ways, but you know yeah. that Computers can't love. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can't breathe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. And, uh, uh, and computers are really a reflection of our capacities. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you look at programs and software and everything, that's like a three, that's like an expression of, of our own brain, neural connections. And, you know, we have a laptop computer, a neck top computer, a bio computer. And in many ways, all the, all the creations in computer technologies, we're kind of, we're kind of creating them based on, on a reflection of our own internal networking and wiring and software and hardware. So um, yeah, it's, it's almost a projection of our inner abilities. So. Yeah, so, okay, so that's, that that's a great way to end but I, you know i, I want to thank you for like being one of the pioneers right to be able to bring that consciousness you know because you're one of the guys that have gone to all these countries that have been closed and opened up that whole space including my little cuba down the island down down south yeah and it, it, it's it must be like an incredible you know like i, I you know i it's so incredible, you know, what you've been able to be part of, you know, and I'm so grateful. Well, you know, for the simplest, to... uh, the simplest things turn out to be the most powerful and everybody in the world needs to know mm -hmm. that the simple practice of breath awareness can begin a healing and transformation and growth process. Just the simple practice of just observing your breath as mm -hmm. a meditation, as a practice, as a habit. And then the next step, begin to learn by controlling your breath. You can control everything about you. And I, you know, it's a mission because I feel, you know, ethically, morally obligated to make sure that people are at least are aware of this possibility. Now then they can choose whether they want to learn and develop, but at least they know. And that's, that's you know, we, we need to, we need to let, make sure that everyone knows that we have these inner abilities, that we can learn very quickly, simple things that can really change our life for the better. And you know, I think, I think those of us who have discovered that, we owe it to the rest of us to make sure that everybody discovers it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's like waking up, letting the world wake yeah. up. You know, so that's great. Yeah. So hey, let me put in one. And speaking of, if people are really interested in learning you know, and just getting everything they can from breath work. One of the most exciting things right now for me is the breathing festival, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which takes place in February, a collection, a list of the biggest names in breath work. 
a, a huge virtual online event, thebreathingfestival.com. I hope people take advantage of that because our mission is to bring the benefits of breath work to every human on the planet and help everyone in the world take breath work into their everyday lives in a practical way. So um, uh, yeah, I encourage people to uh, go to thebreathingfestival.com and go to breathmastery.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in February, we also do a private retreat. You came and did one of them. And so February is a big month for breathing, both big public festival and a very uh, private retreat, deep dive. Um, and so if you're interested in people are interested in either one of those, please jump on in. There are lots of spots. Open. Yeah. And if you want to learn real quick about breaths and all the different types of breaths, you know, buy your book, you know, Just Breathe by Dan Brule. It's like the Bible. It's like, it, it's like unbelievable book. Just yeah. And we're like, uh, we're in 11 languages now. I just got word that uh, we signed a deal in, in Poland for Polish. So now we're up to over 10 languages unbelievable that's that's awesome very cool yeah 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 so anyway that's great you know thank you is there anything else that you want to say or one breath that people can take away or yeah i mean if we can be total even for a moment that unlocks some of our potential so just put all of your attention all of your heart all of your mind all of your body into a long gentle inhale and a sigh of relief. And then just start to play with your breath. The breath will guide us. The spirit of breath is alive in us. And when it sees that we're paying attention to it, it begins to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dan, thank, thank you very much. And uh, I just want to let people also know that uh, you can find more information on Happy Coach at lhappycoach.com. Uh, please share anything you learn in this episode. Share it with your friends. You know, let everybody know about Dan and his wisdom and his teachings. And, uh, and lastly, you know, give us some feedback as to how we can make this more awesome for you. And remember, always breathe happy, live happy. Namaste. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, and we'll see you again soon. Hey, brother. Thank okay. you, everyone. Namaste. Stay here, Mia.